years of age. Um, he came in from school a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I was in the kitchen and heard the door opening, heard an awful crash, right? He had thrown his bag against the wall, right? Um, and he stumped up the stairs and he was effing and blinding as he went up, right? That was his behaviour. <clears throat> How do you think I could have dealt with it or did, did it deal with it? Right. Just what what happened, love? You know. Why are you in bad form? Are you all right? Why are you in bad form? Yeah. So just inquire. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other ways you could have dealt with it? Could have ignored it. Could have ignored it. Yeah. And that's that's a good. Sometimes that's that's important to ignore um, any conflict because it it may not you know it might just go away right it might just fizzle out. Uh, rather than jumping in straight away. So just ignore that, let him cool off, uh, take a while to himself. Yeah? Any other ways? Address the bad behaviour. Just address the bad behaviour. How would I uh, address the bad behaviour? Uh, what I would have done probably is, what are you cursing for? What are you cursing for? What do you throw your bag for? What do you throw your bag for, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? What I actually did was say, right, get down these stairs straight away. <laughs> right? I'll have none of that. Right? Get in there, lift that bag, put it where it should be. Right. Uh, get in there, get something to eat, and do your homework. I don't want to hear a peep from you all day. Right? And if I do, you're grounded. Right? <laughs> that's what it is. Okay, so that's how I handled the behaviour. He was as good as gold, right? He was like a lamb. Right? So, and that's what we call managing behaviour. Right? I managed that behaviour. And again, it's you know, I've done it and I continue to do it. As a parent, I do it all the time. I manage the behaviour because it's easier, right? Doesn't say it's going to go away, and that's. Uh, uh, but it's a quick and easy option, especially when you're tired, especially when you're stressed, or especially when you've got something to do, right? So that's managing behaviour. What do you think my son was feeling, right? As he was coming into the house, what led to that behaviour? Uh, or the, the feelings behind that behaviour. So what was he feeling? Angry. He might have been feeling angry, yeah? Upset. Uh, upset. Yeah, what was he asking? Hurt. He might have felt hurt, yeah. Frustrated. Frustrated. Stressed. Okay. Stressed. Stressed. So he could have felt upset, hurt, frustrated, stressed, angry. Anything else? Lonely. Lonely? Yeah, lonely. Lonely. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Fed up. Yeah. So we've got all these feelings. Might have right? broken up with a girlfriend. Right. Might have broken is that, up with a girlfriend. Is that the feeling? <laughs> You're way ahead of me. Um, but we'll come back to that. Right, because if that's his feelings, right? Now we're having a guess. I don't know what he was feeling. He could have been feeling angry, but what about? He could have been frustrated, but what about? Right? So, um, that's, you know, I'm just having a guess at his feelings that led to his behaviour. So, the issue, right? He might have broken up with his girlfriend, right? He did the breaking up by the way, to my son. Do you know that for sure? I'd say not. Um, he could be bullied, yeah. Or not fixed with the school football team. Could have been grounded for bad behaviour in school. Okay. Right. For yeah. Sorry. He could have been grounded for bad behaviour in school. Yeah. So. Detention. Uh, yeah. Detention. Yeah. Detention. Yeah. Yeah. Could have been blamed in the wrong. Could have been blamed. Yeah. In the wrong. Anything else? Could be worried about something. Pardon? Could be worried about something. He could be worried about something. Or his Xbox is broken. <laughs> <laughs>
But again, so uh, the issue that led to this feeling that led to the behaviour, right? We're having to guess what the issue is, the issue is. we're having to guess what the feelings are that led to the behaviour because I managed it, right? I just managed it so I don't know what's happening here, right? Now, in relation to the uh, issues, um, who do you think might have been involved in this? Friends, peers. So, it could have been friends. Teacher, teacher. Peers, teacher. Parents. Parents. Yeah, it's all their father. It could have been just himself. Nobody else. Just himself, yeah. It's just, just himself. <laughs>
And the questions are, well, what happens? Right? They're very, very simple questions. What were you thinking about the time? And this is for the young person who has caused the conflict. What were you thinking about the time? Right? Um, who's been affected? How can you do things differently the next time? Uh, or how can you make things better? Again, that's as simple as that. And we've got cards that um, you can stick in your fridge. I have one of these in my fridge. No, I don't have a ticket for uh, <laughs> the dart in my fridge. I took yours off the table. Oh! <laughs> that might be it. I think that might be it. Okay? And I have this in my fridge, still have it on. Um, and I've found that they're very, very effective because these questions, are, they're set out specifically because this is a factual question, right? It doesn't ask anything else, right? Uh, what were you thinking at the time, all right, is an, uh, or what were you thinking, <coughs> is an internal question, right? So it's, an, it's a question that will help the young person or, or uh, the person in conflict think about themselves, and they love it, especially if you've got teenagers, love talking about themselves and what it's like for them, right? We also recommend that you use the word thinking, right? The simple reason is, if you ask a young person, what were you feeling at the time? They go, huh? what are you talking about? You know, wasn't thinking anything. What do you mean? Right? If you ask them what they were thinking, they'll tell you what they were feeling. Okay? Um, who's been affected? And again, what you're asking them to do is walk in somebody else's shoes. Okay? Um, and again, this is very, very important because it, it, it creates empathy and it creates an understanding for the person who's in the conflict of uh, the impact of their actions on others, right? It's called empathy, right? Now, empathy <coughs> doesn't evolve um, and, and um, uh, doesn't evolve in all humans until around the age of 21. Empathy and responsibility, right? And it's part of the brain, the frontal part of the brain uh, uh, develops around that time and it finishes its development around 25, but it starts at 21, right? And it's interesting because They've done brain scans over the last couple of years and discovered this. But it is also interesting that in the old days, you never got the key to your 20, the key to the front door until you were 21. Right? So the, we knew this instinctively, right? That 21 is around the time where people start wising up, right? So empathy is one of the things that don't develop. So this allows, this gives uh, the young person an opportunity to fail for somebody else. Right, rather than themselves. And anybody that has teenagers, you know that they're very much into themselves. And that's part and parcel of the uh, hormonal uh, growth, etc. How could you think, do things differently the next time? And again, you're to ask them to think ahead, but, uh, and, um, and start planning and become responsible for their behaviours the next time. And how can you make it better? Right? So how can you make uh, your power of the harm? And again, that's about taking responsibility um, for their own actions, but also, um, you know, uh, going out there and making it making it a difference in uh, the other person's uh, life. Now, as you went, no conflict isn't as simple as that. There's no black and white right uh, situations. Um, and quite often, what I find is, whenever I'm working with uh, young people, I find that. Um, Quite often, there is a reason for the behaviour in the first place, right? We have a reason for that behaviour, right? So they'll tell you a story, and it just doesn't start at, I hit him, right? Um, just for nothing, right? You will get that, but very rarely do people just go up and deck somebody, right? Or shout at somebody or call somebody names. There is something that has gone on uh, you know, before that. There is a history, and it's important to take that into uh, into context or, or into consideration. Okay, so those are the questions, right? Now, I'm just throwing them up, right? Uh, and I'll give you an example of how I, I use them um, because they're very effective. And you can take these home tonight, and if any of your children have uh, done something, um, ask these questions, right? Um, but a couple of years ago. Oh. Can I just ask, what if the conflict is between your child and you? Well, you get your husband to do that, or you get the neighbour in there, right? Um, again, yeah, it's no good um, 
you know, if the conflict's, you, you're right in the middle of it, so you're you're emotionally involved in that. So it is better that you get somebody to maybe ask those questions um, of the person. Yeah. Uh, or let it settle down and then go in and ask your, your child the, the, you know, the set of questions. That's if your child is in the wrong, right? Maybe you that's in the wrong, which would be uh, totally inappropriate. But again, this is about the understanding, getting a deeper understanding. Um, but I used to, you know, I would go away uh, 10 to September, right through to Christmas, but I'd be home all summer, right? So I had 8 to 10 weeks at home with the kids all summer, and this is whenever they were younger. And um, I came back from uh, Roscommon, I was there for three days, and in September it's always a, a kind of uneasy time in, in, my, uh, in my family life. Because everybody gets used to me being around and uh, you know they get into a wee routine. And then September comes, everybody starting back to school and then dad's away for three nights or whatever or um, away for a couple of nights. And so you know the kind of the routine is off balance and that creates an, a, an uncertainty. And my son, being Jack, um, Jack used to in the early days, um, he struggled with this because he likes routine and he likes boundaries. Um, and he used to display, well, <coughs> just, um, it'd be, I wouldn't say shaky, but challenging um, to my wife Liz. And Liz likes routine as well. And of course, she would be more sensitive to these challenges. Um, and I came back from her common one time, um, after three days, and, and walked in the door. Liz says, you're gonna have to talk to your son, right? Again, my son. Definitely my son. Um, and he was terrible, right, over the last couple of days. And I said, right, well, we'll talk about it after. You know, let's settle down. We'll get our dinner and we'll talk after dinner. So um, I'd say but it would have been about 10 at this stage. So after dinner, I sat down and um, sat with him and said, well, Jack, um, your mum's told me that it's been quite difficult over the last three days. So can you tell me what what actually happened. And he started crying, right? And he said, Dad, don't use your work questions on me again. <laughs> <laughs> because he knew, and again, this is what I find fascinating about these questions, he can't escape from them. He, it would have been better for me to bollock him. He would have been upstairs. I'm the victim. Nobody listens to me for me. But what we were doing, we were sitting down with his mum, um, and we were going to go through this. And he knew that he was going to have to t talk about who had been affected. The person that he's closest to, the, you know, the person that he, he's got a grip on with his mum, and he was going to have to look at her whenever he was uh, talking to her. Okay. So,